welcome back to my channel i am lisa founder of anna ministry and today we will be discussing how fools may garner temporary popularity but the wise are remembered for eternity proverbs 10 23 reads it is a sport for a fool to do mischief but a man of understanding hath wisdom with that said let's get started with today's case Today, we will be talking about the events that took place at Columbine High School in 1999. Columbine High School, you know what I'm referring to when I say that. On April 20th, in Littleton, Colorado, it was approximately 11.19 a.m. when two high school teenagers decided to go on a deadly rampage. I looked out the window and there's a kid with a trench coat and a shotgun throwing pipe bombs in the parking lot and then he shot a girl outside. The two teens, Eric and Dylan Klebold, were dressed in all black trench coats and opened fire to their classmates in school. Investigators found their first pipe bomb in the parking lot, and the Denver bomb squad immediately sealed off the building. Robotic cameras later found the entire school was booby-trapped. Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold had apparently committed suicide, but investigators say they spent their final moments rigging the building and their own bodies with more than two dozen pipe bombs. Amid the gunshots and bomb blasts, hundreds of students ran for their lives, stalked in their own school by two of their own classmates who went on a rampage. You were getting shot all around me. <laughs> there was a guy at a table right next to, us, next to me and her, and they just shot him and then walked away, and then he was just sitting there in a pool of blood. By 11.35 a.m., 12 students were dead, and one teacher was badly wounded. And by 12 p.m., the two teenagers had turned the gun on themselves. This rocked the nation. I've asked the Attorney General and the Secretary of Education to stand ready to assist local law enforcement, the schools, the families, the entire community during this time of crisis and sorrow. A crisis response team is ready now to travel to Colorado. And I strongly uh, believe that we should do whatever we can to get enough uh, counselors to the families and the children uh, as quickly as possible. The two perpetrators of this heinous crime specifically targeted minorities, athletes, and Christians. Now imagine being face to face with death and a gunman asked you, do you believe in God? Would you say yes? One of the victims, Cassie Bernard, was asked by one of the gunmen that very same question. And when she said yes, you already know what happened next. Pure Flix has a movie called I'm Not Ashamed. And here's a clip of that scene. Well, Rachel, where's your God now? What would Jesus do? <laughs> do you still believe in God? You know I do. and go be with him. Unfortunately, Casey Bernard was one of the victims and she lost her life at the age of 17. Rachel Scott, who was also a Christian and 17, had a very strange premonition prior to this event. In her journal, one year before the events took place, she wrote, this is my last year, thank you, Lord. And it's not suicide, it's homicide. She also wrote, all I want is for someone to walk with me through these halls of a tragedy. She was eerily foretelling what would come to pass. On the morning of the shooting, Rachel and her brother Craig, who was 16 at the time, drove to school together. They got into a fight. Craig ended up calling her some names and eventually slammed the door and went to class. Two hours before the shooting, Rachel drew this picture and it was very eerie because it was of her own eyes and 13 teardrops that trickled down to a rose and turned to blood drops. This picture would later serve as a premonition because after all the carnage of the shooting, it was 13 lives that were taken that day, a teardrop for each life lost. Once chaos broke out, all of the teens were scrambling trying to figure out what was happening. Jefferson County 911. Yes, I am a teacher at Columbine High School. There is a student here with a gun. He has shot out a window.
That day started out as any other day. I went to class in the morning, met up with my friends, and we decided to sit outside for lunch because that was the first nice day in April. My name's Anne-Marie Hochalter, and I was injured in the Columbine shootings. I thought that it was a senior prank. I didn't think that it was real or anything, and uh, I thought they were using paintball. Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold were up a concrete flight of stairs, and they were shooting down at everybody. I felt a, a stinging in my back when I thought that this was the end. You know, I saw a red thing move out of the corner of my vision, and it was an ambulance. And at that time, um, Eric and Dylan were in the library, which was right above the cafeteria. There were some police lined up um, around the outside uh, perimeter there, and uh, they started shooting at each other. They were able to get me to Swedish Hospital, and uh, they did four hours of surgery. It was still very, very touch and go for you know a couple weeks. They weren't really sure if I was going to. Um, make a full recovery and uh, and you know barring the spinal cord injury I did make a full recovery you know you just really don't know what you have until you lose it because I, I did before I was injured I took you know my walking ability for granted I um, I took everything for granted once the students determined that there was an active shooter at the school they were desperately looking for their siblings as they were being ushered out of the school with their hands above their heads Craig was looking for Rachel but he couldn't find her then the family received the bad news. Rachel was the first victim that was killed. And Craig couldn't help but remember his last moments with his sister was slamming the door and calling her names. All these people that I was praying for, 30 minutes later, their brothers and sisters were, uh, they, they were, uh, their brothers and sisters were showing up. But not your sister. A victim of the Littleton tragedy was laid to rest today. Rachel Scott was one of the first to die outside the school. She was Columbine High's golden girl. Rachel Scott was specifically targeted because of her Christian faith. She shared a class with the two teens. And actually just a couple of weeks before the shooting, Rachel had witnessed to them, the two teens that would eventually kill her. Unbeknownst to Rachel, they were already plotting their deadly rampage. Eric and Dylan were two bullied outcasts, and they were antisocial. Eric and Dylan were filled with so much hatred that they even made videotapes mocking Rachel's Christian faith. One month before the shooting, Rachel was given an assignment during school, and it was to write a paper titled, If You Were Your Best Self, What Would That Look Like? And Rachel wrote a paper titled, My Ethics, My Codes of Life. She writes, I have this theory that if one person can go out of their way to show compassion, then it will start a chain reaction of the same. People will never know how far a little bit of kindness can go. Rachel was known for being a gentle and kind soul. She always spoke to the kids in high school that didn't have many friends and showed so much support to those in need. After Rachel's passing, her mom was moving the dresser from her room and noticed that behind the dresser, Rachel had drawn the outline of her hands. And in it, she had written, these hands belong to Rachel Joy Scott and will someday touch millions of people's hearts. The legacy that Rachel has left is that of compassion and kindness. Many high schools have implemented what they call Rachel's Challenge, which is an organization across the US that works to reduce violence. Their mission statement is to make schools safer, more connected, and a place where bullying and violence are replaced with kindness and respect. Her legacy has indeed touched over 20 million people, just like she wrote on her hand, and is the foundation for creating programs that promote a positive climate for schools. Her vision to start a chain reaction of compassion and kindness is very much alive today. A large number of educators in southern Idaho are betting she was right. Over the past few months, they've been hearing about Rachel's Challenge, a school assembly program that has become a movement for kindness and compassion nationwide. As Rachel's Challenge sweeps the nation, there are encouraging signs that schools can become better places to learn and live. Over 1.5 million people are involved in Rachel's Challenge programs. More than 1,200 schools and businesses have been reached. Over 150 suicides have been prevented. Bullying and violence have decreased. Community service acts and acts of kindness have increased. And some students have even confessed that they were plotting a school shooting and had a change of heart. Another premonition about this event came from Pastor Bruce Porter about four months before the shooting. And it came in through a dream. 
In his dream, he was in a schoolroom and all of a sudden he heard popping noises and gunshots. And then the students started to run and he noticed that the students started to appear with blood on them. Um, this scared him. So he woke up and he told his wife this dream and he said, I don't understand what this dream means. He said, I see the students running out of the school with their hands above their heads. And exactly four months later, this dream became a reality. In the book of Job, chapter 33, verses 14 to 17 reads, For God speaks in one way, and in two, though man does not perceive it, in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls on men, while they slumber on their beds, then he opens the ears of men and terrifies them with warnings, that he may turn aside from his deed and conceal pride from a man. God speaks to us in dreams and gives us visions and warnings. Eric and Dylan purposely planned the attack on April the 20th because that is Adolf Hitler's birthday. Yep, you guessed it. Hitler was their idol. Scripture tells us a fool walks in darkness. The fool is not one who is mentally deficient, but is morally bankrupt. It's not that he cannot learn wisdom, it's that he won't. They refuse to know, fear, and obey God. Proverbs 10, 20 to 21 reads, The tongue of the righteous is choice silver. The heart of the wicked is of little worth. The lips of the righteous feeds many, but fools die for lack of sense. Just like scripture says, the lips of the righteous feeds many. Rachel's positive impact is still feeding so many young minds till this day. The school shooters may have gotten temporary popularity that they so desired, but let's be for real. They're forgotten. They're not commemorated nor celebrated. The victims, however, have left a positive impact. For fools may garner temporary popularity, but the wise are remembered for eternity. That's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit that bell notification so you know when my next video will be out. And God bless you.